Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the calculations command in Photoshop. It's been used over the years mainly for creating masks. There are other techniques but its main use has been for creating masks. I'm not going to hang around here because we need to get into calculations quite quickly but it works like this. Channel plus channel equals third channel. That's the way it works. It blends two channels together to make a third channel, which is an alpha mask channel, an alpha channel. So RGB is the composite channel. Here's the red channel. Anything that's bright, i.e. more red, will show up white. Anything that's dark has got no red in it. So blue has got no red in it. So the skin is showing up really well. Let's say I wanted to use that as a mask, that, that channel, I would just drag red down to the new channel icon here. I've got that to use as a mask. So if I command click on it, it will load up the mask. Command and control D. Then also I go select, load selection, and use the red copy as a mask. Go OK on it. Command and control D. And that's what we had to do in the old days when we had difficult things to mask. We would use this method. So you'd always look at your channels and say, can I use one of these channels to start my mask off? We only had the magic wand tool and quit mask and the channels and that was it. And if you even use the magic wand today, you know how frustrating that can be. So we use calculations a lot. So let's get rid of that red copy and drag it down to the trash can there. Let's look for a green and see the green has actually got good contrast between the hair and the background, but blue is better. So back up to the RGB composite channel, command or control two. Calculations, image, calculations. Now it's very flaky, it always remembers what you did last time. So quickly, I'm gonna take all this to zero and put the blending on normal. Now it works just like layers. Source one is sat above source two. So you're applying it like a, you know, the blend mode to source two. So that's the way to look at it. It's like layers, but it's not layers. On blending mode normal, there is no reaction. So I'm only seeing the blue channel. I can invert it like so. If I want to see only the red channel here, I could go to zero on the opacity. I'm only looking at the red channel. As you can see, the skin is very bright. So put it back to 100. So back to normal opacity. Right, if I want to create this mask of the hair, what am I going to do? Well, I said I wanted green in this channel. Now we have all these blend modes, except hue, saturation, um, luminosity and color, I think, because obviously this is grayscale. Now the big ones for the blend modes are multiply screen, overlay and soft light. I'm not saying they won't work. I'm saying is it's down to experimentation. With something like this with solid color, I probably wouldn't even go to those blend modes. I'd go to add and subtract. Now subtract is in the layers at the moment and some of the painting tools, but add is only in apply image and calculations. And when you're creating masks, add and subtract will be your friends because there's extra controls and I will come to that. But I quickly run through the obvious ones, multiply. It's going to make things darker, it won't blow out blacks. Screen, the polar opposite of multiply, will make things brighter, but won't blow out the whites. Overlay and soft light are contrast modes. Overlay will not touch 50% gray, make your mid-tone blacks you know, slightly darker and your mid-tone whites slightly brighter. I like the contrast on your TV or whatever. The biggies are add and subtract, and the reason being is they give us offset and scale. And this is really important because this will give you the great control for creating masks. Now, add and subtract are the only ones that have offset and scale. I'm going to put that down to zero. You know, the trouble with this is command, it does remember what you did with a previous blend mode. And you've got to be really careful and have your eyes peeled. That is the file name. You can have source one at one file or document and source two at another document. That's not unusual, but both of those files have to have exactly the same pixel dimensions, width and height. But let's keep things simple. We're using one file. Layer. I've only got one layer. That's the background layer. If I had more than one layer, I could pick that layer or there will be the word merged there. That's really important. And that's all the layers joined together, so to speak. So merge will be there if you have 
more than one layer. Now the channel is the channel we're going to mix with the you know, other channel. So we're mixing blue with green depending on the blend mode. So it's source two with add, it's source two plus source one. Forget about the channels, this is the way it works. It's on luminosity. So if I had 200 luminosity, you know, between zero and 255, 255 being white, zero being black. If I had on the pixel grid like this, one pixel, the source two was 100 luminosity and source one was 200, 200 plus 100 is 300. Way above 255. Way above it. We will see white on our screen, but that number is stored there. It's really important because when we start playing around, you'll see what will happen. So I'm adding green to blue at the moment. Um, it's not working as a mask for the hair. Maybe if I invert green, I'm getting somewhere. So I've just inverted green. I'm inverting it. What was uh, black is now white and I'm adding it to the blue channel. So adding will always make things brighter. Subtracting will always make things darker. As I said, with add and subtract, we have scale and offset. The way it works is like this. So we've added them together, we've got a number, that number will be divided by the scale. So if it's 300 divided by one, we get 300. So nothing is taking place. We can only go between one and two. If I put three in there and tabbed, I get a warning, a number between one and two is required, closest value inserted, which will be two. We can have three decimal places, but only between one and two. So two will make it darker. So anything above one will always make it darker, but it won't have harsh transitions. Now, you think that would be really useful, but it isn't. For creating masks, it just doesn't work. So I very rarely go above one, ever. I'm not saying don't experiment, but one is usually where I stay. So the result being divided by one is nothing's happening, and then passes that result on to offset. Now, as I said, I can go way above white and way below black. So how do I bring it back? If I've done that, I use the offset. So I can go to plus 255 or minus 255. So it's not from naught to 255. Because of these extremes we can have, you can't go be uh, below minus 255 and blah plus 255. But when you're putting the offset in, you don't put plus in front of it. So minus 255 is the lowest we can go to. Now you think they'll make everything black because there were so many bright bits in there, way above 255, I've not got jet black, which you'd think I'd get. So that's what offset does. It offsets it either to minus 255 or just to 255. And you can pick any number in between, obviously. Now, if I wanted it slightly darker, I could go minus 50, let's say. Um, and it's getting slightly darker. And this is why add and subtract are really important. And it gives you, you know, it gives you how to understand calculations work. That's the calculation side of it. When you're using multiply, it gets all a bit complicated. I know how they work, but explaining them here would be pointless. Add and subtract show you how it works. So you're adding the luminosity or subtracting the luminosity. Obviously, with the other blend modes, it's a bit more complex. So let's say I would stick with this. I might try subtract actually and see if I can get anything better out of this. I am actually, the, the, it's a bit whiter there, but there's some black bits in the hair. So I might go up to 60, let's say, and offset it by 60 and make it 60 levels brighter. That's not a bad mask. The hair had a lot of bright highlights in it. That's probably the best I'm going to get. So let's output it to a new channel. Now, you, if you output it to a new document, you'll have a multi-channel mode document with one layer in it and one channel. It's great for storing masks in, so I would normally do it to new channel. Now mask I will show you in a minute, but let's just output it to the new channel. I've got that channel there. If I was being very pedantic, I would name it for how I created it. So red or whatever, inverted, subtract, etc., offset of, but we haven't got time for that, but that's what I would normally do. But now I'm going to use calculations again to refine this mask, so image, Calculations. Now, if I start to use the red channel, I've got alpha one showing there. I know that face was white in the red channel. If I invert it, I'm not getting anywhere there. So um, let's swap them around, put red there and alpha one there. You know, this is difficult to do, you know, like to how, how to work it out sometimes. And some, I'm on subtract, maybe I should be on add. That's my fault. 
So I've added in the red channel to the Alpha 1 mask and I've refined the mask because the face is now white. I've just noticed the offsets at 50. This is a problem. It remembers what you did last time, but I could probably keep it at 50. Actually, it's helping me along. A lot of those finer hairs are starting to show better. I could even probably risk going up to 70, let's say. And I'm going to create another Alpha channel and I'll probably call that one final. Now, the way I would start to, to refine the mask is by getting the blacks really black like that. And then I'll probably use the quick selection tool, whatever, smudge tool, but dodge and burn tools, etc., etc. I'm not going to go down refining this mask. This is not what this video is about. I'm just going to go cancel now. So two passes, I've got quite a good alpha channel. Let's go back to the uh, RGB channel and show you a few other things. It's on the marquee tool. Let's marquee that bit there. Go to image calculations. I'm not really bothered about what's here. I might just go subtract. It doesn't make any difference. Um, mask. Now, when you put this on, what you're doing, you're outputting the result of all this, the scale and the offset, etc., through a mask. Now, obviously, if I put it through the red channel where the face is white, this result will come through. So if I put it onto um, the red channel, the result of all this will be coming through the red channel. You can see the face darkened there, not much else. So this is what's happening. The result of all this is being output by the, you know, via the luminosity of a channel, an alpha channel, a color channel, I can invert it, but also here is selection. So I can output everything through that selection. Hence, you're seeing that. So you're seeing that when I've inverted it. So you can use a selection that can be really useful for refining masks. You need to think quite a bit when you're using calculations. Now, how can I get to where I want to get? So this is really useful having that selection. If I change that to new document, we all know what a selection is. I very rarely have ever output to a selection. Save the alpha channel. You've got it there to use all the time. You're, you're taking a risk to saving it to selection. But to new document, if I go OK, I've got a new document now. But notice image, mode. It's a multi-channel document. It's crushed all the layers down. If I did have the layers, I've only got one channel. Great for storing grayscale masks, but for very little else. So that's really calculations. If I go back to my image there, it's simple as this. It's, you know, image, calculations, and subtract and add will be your friends. It just makes life easier, add and subtract, and you can see the math behind it. That's it, guys. That's calculations. I hope you got something from this. It's not intimidating once you start to understand it like this. So it's like subtract would be uh, that minus that divided by the scale, offset by whatever, 255 to minus 255. Simple as that. Opacity you very rarely play with. Mask to output it via a mask. You can use a selection in the mask as well if you want to. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.